everyone, and welcome back. We're here today with our first Cabral House Call of the Weekend and Serene Our Community's Questions each and every weekend from all around the world. I do hope that you've been tuning in over the past few years now and, uh, and really getting to hear about, not that I think it's a good thing, but really the struggles of people all over the world just because it allows you to know that you are not alone. So the great thing is that... I mean, the internet is is good, and it's also not so good, right? We've got a lot of answers uh, online, and a lot of people sharing uh, information that isn't that isn't the whole truth. That's the bad part. But the good news is now, unlike when I got sick, you know, twenty plus years ago, twenty five years ago or so, uh, you you just couldn't you didn't know a lot of other people. I didn't know anybody else uh, around me that had. Addison's disease and, you know, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and uh, type 2 diabetes and all these, you know, different types of issues. And so I just think that the nice thing is this, you can, you, you understand that a lot of other people are going through the struggle, but the great news is that there is always an underlying root cause. There's always an answer. You can always get well. So when people ask, is there a way to overcome this? The answer is yes, right? The answer is yes. It doesn't mean that it's easy, but it does mean the answer is yes, right? Because there's someone else that's been in your position before that has got well. And since I've been working with people now for a few decades, a couple decades, not a few. I, I, well, I guess it has been a few, but uh, technically 20, how many years? 22 years or so now, somewhere right around there, 21 years, we'll say. Uh, and we've seen a lot of people, right? We've seen over 300,000 client appointments. We have a lot to share. And that's really the goal of the Cabral concept in these house calls is not to give you medical advice, not to give you the exact treatment plan for you. That's, that's not the goal. The goal is to be able to provide you with useful information for you to be able to take that next step. And that's what we hope to do. So without further ado, let's get into your questions. The first question today is, can in from May 9th, and I know we are at currently July 3rd, uh, but you know, again, we're, we're catching up on your questions, and we always do six uh, each Saturday and six each Sunday. So first question from Sheila says, I have elevated levels of cobalt past the blue range on the minerals and metals test. Can you please explain what could cause this? I don't eat a lot of meat. I do take the Equalife B complex once a day. Any other causes for elevation? Is there a concern with this level? And if so, what should I do to bring it down? All right, great question. So cobalt, uh, if you go to the lab test, it's the minerals and metals test at equi.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. If I ever refer to a product or a lab, it's that's where they are located at our practice online. Anybody anywhere in the world can get this. Okay, so... Cobalt is a trace mineral. It doesn't mean that it's bad, but just like all minerals, you don't want it very elevated. Yours seems to be in a range that's completely fine. Um, where does cobalt come from? Well, it actually comes from all basically many, many things. It comes from meat, it comes from fish, some nuts, some leafy greens, etc. But it can also come from vit vitamin B12. So vitamin B12, you can kind of see the name in there. It's called cobalamin has cobalt as part of that uh, molecular structure. But you can also get it in one other place. And when people ever have a toxicity, it's oftentimes and sometimes from stainless steel. So if they're wearing stainless space jewelry, it's possible that they're absorbing some of that because it's flaking off. Maybe it's older jewelry, um, but also from uh, stainless steel pans and spatulas. Now, stainless steel is okay typically to cook with. Most people never have an issue with it. But their nickel levels or their cobalt levels could be elevated because stainless steel gives off nickel and cobalt from how it's made. So what do you do? Well, what you can do is just make sure that when you're cooking, you are not scraping the pan with a metal spatula. Use a bamboo spatula. Use something else rather than that. And you could also switch, if you wanted to, to a different type of cookware, such as ceramic or glass. So something to think about. And um, Sheila, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and again, anytime you want to do a, a, a metals-based detox, you can, of course, do a heavy metal detox, uh, which is at Equi.life. John's up next. Hey, Dr. Brawl, I'm having an issue with fatigue and lightheadedness following lunch. I do two shakes and two meals each day. I don't have an issue with breakfast, which is essentially an oatmeal and shake. There is no protein powder in the shake. I get fatigue following my first whole food meal which is lunch. The next meal at supper causes no issues, even if it's the exact same meal that I had at lunch. I don't believe the time of the day makes a difference because if I go the entire day without eating and only have supper, I get the issue at supper. The most common pattern 
to be the first whole food meal of the day. What are your thoughts on this? Possible solutions, additional information. I believe I have mild POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I took an organic acids test, which showed imbalanced gut flora and yeast. I'm on day 14 of the CBO protocol. The issue started long before that. Tried ginger tea, which upsets my stomach. Tried HCL, which causes severe burning. Do I perhaps need to do add more food or protein to my first shake to fire, my, fire up my digestion? Thanks for your time. John, a lot of information there, but helpful, and um, I hopefully will be able to help you. So it does seem that uh, POTS and your overall autonomic nervous system may be the issue. So basically, if you have an easy meal of oatmeal or a shake or smoothie in the morning, it doesn't cause too much digestion to really have to take place, which is why it's basically the ideal breakfast. You always want a liquid before lunch or easy to digest breakfast. You can check out my previous podcast on that. So, okay, where, where, what are we getting at? Well, if you're working all day, you're moving along, and then you're asking your body, okay, stop and digest. Digest, it can move you from that sympathetic nervous system, which gives you energy, to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is basically rest and digest. So it looks like you're being shifted there, and your POTS could be a likely culprit. So we, I don't know why you would not be using the daily nutritional support with for your protein and all your vitamins and minerals. You should be if you're on the CBO, unless you're using the daily activation and multi, but we're not going to get too deep into that because maybe you're working with a health coach and they've recommended something else that works too. Okay, so I would work on that sodium to potassium balance with POTS. Definitely, I would recommend running a few additional labs, uh, all of the big five if possible. I would run the minerals and metals test for those uh, four electrolyte numbers. And I would run the stress hormones, mood and metabolism as the other lab if you can only run two additional labs. Okay, um, and yes, I would try, even if you just started with one scoop of the daily nutritional support, that with breakfast. It seems like you have an issue with histamines potentially, so I would look into histamines, my previous podcast on histamines and mast cells, uh, because ginger tea and HCL are both causing an issue. You possibly could have H. pylori. You would find out if you had H. pylori with a bacteria and parasite stool test. So there's a lot to explore. You can definitely figure it out, but you need to just take those next steps now. All right, John? Susie's up next. Are you familiar with greater trochanteric pain syndrome? This is what I believe I have. I experience a burning sensation in my butt, outer hip, and down my IT band, which is your iliotibial band. Sometimes it's more of a dull ache. It's especially painful when I lay down and put pressure on those areas. I go to physical therapy, but it only helps temporarily and really would like to solve the issue long term. Do you have any insight? Happy to help with this. Uh, my original background is in nutrition and uh, personal training. Uh, and uh, strength and conditioning. So we saw this quite a bit, greater trochanter, trochanteric pain syndrome, but also um, often confused with what sometimes is a better, and again, I'm using diagnosis in air quotes, uh, called inflammatory piriformis syndrome. And what happens is the piriformis gets inflamed, which then impinges on the sciatic nerve, which then causes pain down the leg. And that might be what you're, I can't, again, I'm not going to give you a diagnosis over a podcast, uh, but that might be what you're dealing with as well. So, but the way to fix both of those, so technically the greater, greater tro, uh, trochanter-based issues is because the bursar in the hip gets inflamed. And the bursar that gets inflamed then causes impingement and referred pain down your leg as well. So no matter what, there's inflammation, okay? Now, secondary to that is there's inflammation oftentimes because there's a misalignment. So physical therapy is helping you because it's working on the alignment and strengthening the proper muscles. You really do want to work with a good, um, I would say, someone that is just really knowledge knowledgeable in muscular therapy. They might be National Academy of Sports Medicine trained. They might be functional range of conditioning trained. But it's someone that's going to help you activate your glute muscles by doing bridges with like a towel between your knees. They're going to have you doing some supermans or superwomans. Uh, other things to activate your hamstring muscles and your glutes to help balance that from tight hip flexors. So they're most likely going to help open up your hip flexors, which are your flexor muscles, your uh, tensor fasciae latte. <laughs> the TFL, and the, um, they're going to help open those up 
And they're gonna help strengthen then your extensor muscles, so the hip extensors uh, around the glute medius, uh, minimus, and all around the uh, hamstrings, glute area, all right? So that seems like that'll be the fix. It really is for the majority of the people we work, work with. Uh, we do self-myofascial release with a foam roller, uh, and then we'll do the glute strengthening exercises, extensor strengtheners, and then open up the flexors. All right, next question. All right, so Laura is up next. Laura says, hi, Dr. Brawl. I like putting old things I can into my smoothies. So I blend berries with different types of lettuce and herbs, some seeds like chia and sunflower or pumpkin and linseed, depending on seed cycling. Sometimes walnuts, hemp protein, etc. I like using a lot of cinnamon, turmeric with a little bit of black pepper, ginger root in it as well. Wondering if how much is too much because I put a lot in there. Um, is more not necessarily better? The second part of my question is about seed cycling. Can I use other seeds like chia no matter what time of the month? And how much of the seeds for seed cycling can we use daily? Because I use a lot of sesame. I live in a country where we use tahini um, and everything. Thank you for all that you do. Love listening to the podcast. Let's see what else. Um... I have withdrawal syndrome when I don't get to listen to it. A little joke there to brighten up your already amazing day. Uh, please keep it up, helping so many people keep being this amazing. Lots of love for you and your family and everyone listening. Happy healing, Lara. Well, I appreciate that. And, and really the same to you as well. We, we are here uh, really because we believe, like you, that life can always be that much better. We're always trying to optimize, myself included. So here's the thing, though. Um, a smoothie really can be too much. Like... I mean, I'm a big advocate of adding a lot to the smoothie, but you'll know when it's too much. You'll start to feel some gas or distension. You might feel some itchiness around the eyes. You might get hives. You might get a little brain fog. So use your body as a bit of a guide for when it's too much. You know, and that's really it. But I mean, it looks like you're doing such a great job. And I can't say no to adding a little bit of turmeric or cinnamon or ginger. Uh, a little bit of black pepper helps with absorption. So it doesn't like to look like you're doing anything um, wrong or, or, you know, bad at all. So the question is, can you add chia seeds or other seeds? The answer is yes. You could definitely add chia seeds. That's not an issue. If people don't know what seed cycling is, please go back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and just type in seed cycling. Um, you can always, if you're ever missing a podcast, you can't find one on a particular topic. We do have about 2000. Now there's probably been a topic that you're looking for and you can't find it with a search box. Just ask inside of Cabral support group.com and Michelle or one of our amazing health coaches will let you know which episode it is that you're looking for. And if you're an IHP, you can actually ask right inside of IHP and Daniel or one of our other amazing health coaches can help there as well. Okay, so um, you can use chia seeds, not an issue. Can you use more? Well, the goal is, you know, you, you want to use about a tablespoon or so. You could, use, you could use double that amount. I don't have an issue with that. You can go overboard. There's no doubt about it because those could be more estrogenic seeds or more progesterone-based seeds. And then can you use more? There was one seed which was... Uh, it must be sesame, right? Because you talked about tahini and tahini is made from sesame. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Uh, I can't find it now in your, in your uh, question. But the answer is no, you, you wouldn't want to be overdoing sesame during the particular two weeks of the month where it's not calling for sesame, okay? So just, just be careful there. And of course, your results will also dictate how much you can do and get away with. All right, we are going into our one, two, three, four, five last question of the day, and it's from Bryn. Bryn says, hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for everything you do. I love your podcast and have learned so much from you. I wanted to write in and ask you what your thoughts are on some of the health issues I've been having and have been trying to figure out for the past few years. At the beginning of the day, I am not swollen or inflamed at all. However, throughout the day, my legs, especially ankles and calves, will get swollen and tight. They don't get as swollen if I'm able to elevate them throughout the day. But I have a desk job, so it's hard to elevate them. I work out five to six times a week. I'm 25, 134 pounds. I'm five foot eight. I also seem like I have bad circulation since my fingers and feet will stay cold or hot. Lips will turn purple when I'm cold. I'm not sure if my circulation is correlated with my swelling or if it's not related. I also have bad scoliosis. Could this play a factor in my circulation and swelling? Sorry for this 
that it's this long, but I really appreciate any help. I'm doing your parasite cleanse right now, and we'll be doing the mold and heavy metal one after I see if those help. I also had a call with one of your health coaches, and they suggested to do a food sensitivity test and kidney to metabolic and vitamins test. Thank you so much in advance. Okay. Happy to help with this. All right. So, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not happy to hear that you're struggling with this. Um, I'm glad that you're going through a lot of the different detox and cleanses that we recommend anyways. The only way to know if it's mold, heavy metals, or parasites, of course, is to test. But if you're not able to afford the test, you can always do the parasupport protocol, the heavy metal detox, and the mold protocol if needed. Um, certainly, it's, it's almost always better to do the CBO protocol and then the mold protocol because it's even more effective. Uh, but so those are great. And I would do that. I mean, really, like I, those could be those could be game changers. I don't know, right? Because I haven't seen any of your labs. But there's one more thing to look at. And the, you know, the, the swelling around the ankles could be so many different things. Food sensitivities, like they just talked to with you about gut-based issues when you eat, but it could also be Raynaud's uh, syndrome, which by the way, all things have an underlying root cause and Raynaud's is oftentimes related to stress on the adrenals and thyroid. The adrenals cause circulatory issues, there's no doubt about it because of the inhibitory, I should say the excitatory neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine that they produce, uh, but also that they start to bring blood more towards the vital areas that are needed with blood flow when you're in the fight or flight, but also namely that uh, your thyroid begins to become inhibited. So when thyroid begins to become lower, there's typically poor circulation. So if we're talking about, you know, if you could do one lab, I would love to be able to narrow this down. So I would love for you to run the stress hormones, mood and metabolism. And then of course, I would love you to be able to run that candida metabolic and vitamins test or the starter kit along with that. So if you can run the big five, run the big five, you know, it'd be great to run all of them because uh, it could be omega sixes for inflammation versus omega threes. But if you're not able to run all the big five, run the uh, stress hormones, mood and metabolism, and then you can do the CBO protocol uh, and the, the CBO finisher to help with the gut-based issues. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, really great questions today. We answer, I want to make sure we got our six. We've answered Bryn and Lara and Susie and John and Sheila. One, two, three, four, five, six. My math could be off today, which is pretty hilarious that I'm having difficulty counting. Uh, but, you know, if we, if we did one less today, uh, it is a Saturday. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be sure to answer uh, six or seven tomorrow. So take care, everyone. Have an amazing day, and I'll be back tomorrow answering our community's questions.